Good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome along to the vlog. What's that in the middle of the uh, brewery, you might be asking? Well, uh, <laughs> it's got quite a story as this tank. So, um, if any of you follow Martin Bailey's channel, Made by Martin, uh, I do. Uh, well, he, um, he bought this tank off an auction quite recently and uh, then decided it was probably a little bit too big. And uh, we were in a conversation, I was just saying how jealous I was about him having a big mash tun, uh, matron. And uh, then all of a sudden he says, well, look, it's too big for me at, at this stage. Would you like it? So um, we arranged uh, for us to buy it off him. Uh, at cost price and then I set about going to pick it up well as you can probably tell by looking at it, it not only is it bigger than what Martin thought it's also bigger than what we thought so I've measured the internal diameter of this thing uh, I can almost stand up inside it and um, its volumetric capacity is around uh, 2000 litres so this one here does us I think it's 500. I'll have to double check. I know that we max out at 135 kilograms of grain in here. So at like a three to one grain to uh, water ratio, it can be quite difficult even at that. So the idea was for us to get this mash tun and uh, yeah, use this for the bigger beers. Uh, I suppose it's not that much bigger than what we're looking for, but when you've got it in the cold light of day next to the existing mash tun, it does look a little bit dominating. So of course, at some stage, we're gonna increase the size of the boil kettle, increase the size of the HLT. And in a couple of weeks time, we've got two 1000 litre pressure vessels coming to allow us to, uh, you know, carbonate beer in tanks so that Cylindro conicals, DPVs, dual purpose vessels, all sorts of names for them. Anyway, we drive across to Wigan. Uh, this is an old Prospect Brewery mash tun, and it was on some legs. So once you look at the legs, you really will see that this was quite, quite a big tank. They're quite heavy actually. So if I just lay the leg on the floor, you'll probably get a better idea of how big the tank was when it was standing. There we go. So if I had a tape measure available, which I don't, I'd be able to tell you how tall it was, but I think totally, it's in excess of two meters high and it's 1460 wide from outside to outside. Internals are about 13 something and when we got to the building they uh, they didn't have any sh roller shutter doors they just had these PVCU French doors going through some brickwork which was a little bit tight and uh, the width of the brickwork was 1460 in total so it just would not go here's a tape measure look it wouldn't go hey so what we had to do was walk round the corner to tool station got us out of a pickle again and chop the legs off that was the only way out so yeah 2200 was standing so 2.2 meters tall with the legs on and come on sunshine hook up hook up oh i can see what's going to happen here let me swap it round because there's a little kink on that uh, tape measure oh it's gone again anything what exactly while I'm filming so there we go look total width 1480 internal width 1390 give or take it's probably 1400 when I've got it in the right position so yeah wouldn't fit out the building so we went around the corner we measured the doors went around the corner and bought a, uh, a grinder because I didn't bring one with me and some slitting discs and we measured 
10 mil smaller than the doors, so 1350, the doors are 1360, gave us 10 mil either side. Put it on the pallet and we dragged it through the doors onto the onto the van. And then we couldn't get it on the van either because of this this had a little pipe coming out up here. So it was hitting the rollers on the roller shutter doors on the Luton. But eventually we got it on. We got it strapped down and we brought it back. So I needed to cut the legs down anyway for it to actually be usable in here. Um but not necessarily where they've been cut. So I may have to weld these back on again and then cut them off again. Sounds crazy, I know. Uh, this also came with an underback. Here it is. Probably not use that, but it's got some nice beefy valves on it that we could maybe utilize for something else. It'd make a nice hot back actually, that wouldn't it? And then some more pipe work down there. It's got quite a big sparge arm on it. All nicely fabricated, actually, um, with a rotating arm underneath. Feels nice and spinny, so it's probably, you know, good enough for the job. But of course, when we're brewing batches of vacant and uh, pork, this mash tun is too big for us, 100%. So we're going to have to keep this one about, and we'll be doing most of the brewing with the existing one. That'll give me a bit of time to get this one to the stage that I want. So weld the legs back on, sort the plates out. These are the uh, perforated plates to allow the grain to drain. Not as good as wedge wire or mesh, but they're very solid, heavy plates. So I'm quite pleased with that. It looks like it's maybe three mil steel, maybe even more. Um, so they're nice and tough. But we'll get it to a state that we want it to be in and then I'm going to have to just find somewhere for it to live because we are short of space in here. In fact, I've not even checked if I can get this into the workshop or not. Oh yeah, these doors are much wider than the doors that we've just had to contend with. So this shouldn't be a problem. Another little project I've got going on here. It's just a little doggy thing, but my paintwork didn't work out. Doom bark, hey, eh? what do you think? Anyway, I've got to tidy that up. So, yes, where do we store this? Is it going to come down here and we'll lose all of our grain store capacity? And we just stick it next to these two engineering pieces of engineering equipment? Probably. That's probably what's going to have to happen because, of course, we can just stick all the malt on a pallet and move that around regularly. Or I might even have to bring it into the workshop. We might have to get rid of that table in the corner and just bung it in there for now uh, until we need it. But, you know, it is what it is. I think it was good value for money. Were we ready for the tank yet? Yeah, probably not. Um, Martin would have had to put this into storage as well because I think this would have been massive for his uh, unit. So, you know, he's helped me out in terms of finding this tank for us and I've helped him out in terms of taking it off his hands once we realised the size of the thing so that's another project I expect to see more of that tank in the future but as far as today goes um, we're probably just going to dress it up a little bit and find somewhere for it to live because I don't think we'll be using it in the next month or two so we're, we're looking around trying to figure out where we're going to store this and uh, I did say we're probably going to have to put the barrel aging project on hold and get rid of these and uh, Gemma pointed out that um, yeah, I also got these through Martin so you know maybe he's a bad influence on me I don't know <laughs> so what I think I'm going to do with these barrels um, because some of them are still leaking and I'm not happy with the seal I know oh look we've got fruit flies buzzing around on them as well so I know Martin's not happy with his barrels. He's not going to go ahead and use them for aging. So I think I want to do the same with these. So what I might do, best case scenario, chuck them into the beer garden as they are, turn them into tables or something. Worst case scenario, chop them in half, turn them into planters. We've got eight nice half barrel planters there. I'll probably be able to sell them 
for more than what we paid for the whole uh, barrel itself. So maybe 50 quid each and I think we paid 60 or 50 pounds for each barrel so I could sell the planters for 50 quid maybe. Or just bung them in the garden, in the beer garden and uh, use them for decorative purposes because I think it would look nice. So anyway, that's the plan. I think what we're going to have to do is move that. Could do we move in this pilot kit as well because that's in the way. And then possibly um, do something with this stillage. Uh, pile all of the shelving together, all the glasses together, all the boxes together, sort them out a little bit better and utilise our space a bit better, get rid of all those containers up there. Yeah, I really am going to have to have a clear out because when these two DPVs come, they're going to be taking up quite a bit of space. They're twice the size of these tanks, by the way. Almost twice the size. Where I've got three of these, I'll get two DPVs. So probably there. And then we'll find somewhere else for these three tanks, FE1, 2 and 3. So it's going to be a case of, yeah, juggling. Well, it's going to be a tricky few weeks, I can tell you that much. But we've got time to do it, so... Um, yeah, well, I'll not bore you with the details now, because I don't have a plan. But as things progress, I'll make sure we continue to document it, and you can see exactly what's happening when it happens. <laughs> 